Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Pure Accelerate 2017. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to Pure Accelerate. We're here at Pier 70 in San Francisco, and this is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, David Floyer. Matt Kicks, Kicksmuller is here. He's the Vice President of Product and Solutions at Pure Storage. Kicks, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for having me. My yeah. first time on theCUBE, I'm honored. It's awesome, well, yeah. we're honored to have you. We've got to have a nickname on theCUBE. We had Dietz on earlier. <laughs> Stu had to leave. Right? You can call me V if you want. You really don't have a nickname. We call him Floyer. <laughs> All right. And, uh, so anyway, great job today on stage. You got a really engaged audience. You guys have a lot of fun. Yeah. The orange shoes are, are cool. How do you feel? I feel great. You know, as I think as we said today, this is uh, the biggest year we've ever had in innovation at Pure. And it was fun to really take the focus back to software this release. You know, we spent the last year bringing out our next gen kind of cloud era all flash platforms between FlashBlade and FlashArray X. And this was an opportunity to really kind of flex our muscles around software, flex our muscles around uh, IoT and AI and, and, uh, and that as well. So it was a fun set of releases. Well it's been interesting to watch you guys and watch your project, product strategy evolve. And, and of course, coincident to that is your TAM expands. Mm -hmm. Right, so it started in the sort of you know, lower end of the, the spectrum and then it went into the 20s and now it's in the 30s. And I was saying to David, it used to be, well, I buy EMC for block and I buy NetApp for file. Yep. And you guys are challenging that sort of convention. Yeah, yeah. Maybe talk a little bit about your strategy and, 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 and how you're penetrating now new markets. Yeah, we think about our market opportunity in kind of three buckets. So first off, um, you know, we go after the top 500 cloud providers. And you know, we see our, one of our biggest segments is really cloud providers and we see them increasingly not really looking at legacy options for storage. You know, they want a modern storage fabric. And part of why we're so excited in, in particular about uh, the work we've done around NVMe is we feel like it helps us go after some of the more server DAS centric workloads of the past or of the next gen workloads. And we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, a second key area that, that we're focusing on is really going after next generation data driven applications. And you know, AI, ML, all these areas are really driving um, amazing storage growth. It's even, I think, surprised us how quickly it's, it's come up. And uh, you had folks on theCUBE earlier today talking about Flash Blade, but one of the, the kind of uh, threads that I think unites a lot of the next gen applications is they're designed to be scale out and they're designed uh, to really need a lot of parallelism from storage. And so what we're doing with Flashblade is really desi designing a storage platform that's kind of parallel from the start and can deliver that massive concurrency that uh, you just can't get from a lot of legacy providers. Um, and then yeah, I think the third thing we're obviously excited about is going in and uh, kind of ripping out the spinning rust of the past. Um, you know, we've made a, a lot of uh, um, innuendos at this conference and uh, how we're in this kind of classic rusting building and uh, maybe it's a nice metaphor for some of that. It's hair but, uh, down. Yeah. <laughs> but we are, uh, you know, we're helping uh, liberate the, the X world and I, and I think one of the things that we're excited about today was to announce uh, Purity Active Cluster. You know, that's been kind of that, that top of the reliability hill feature when people want uh, metro clustered applications, active, active, and two data centers. Um, that's about as reliable as it gets, and that was a feature that we didn't have in FlashRay until now, and so we're excited to kind of have that final uh, area to, uh, to go in and, and help liberate. Yeah, so it's not just the sort of disk spinning rust replacement. It's, you talked this morning about SRDF. I remember well in the early yeah. 1990s when SRDF yeah. came out, and it was, it was game changing, and it obviously has driven a lot of revenue for e EMC, now Dell EMC, and it, and it helped a lot of customers, but there's no question that it was the mother of all complexity and, yep. and cost. So, yep. so talk a little bit more about how you guys are going to approach that problem. Yeah, I mean, if, I think if you look at a lot of what we announced today, there just continues to be a threat of simplicity throughout everything. And, um, you know, it's, I, I was employee number six up here. I've been on the adventure from day one, right? And um, I think we, we always had a, a fundamental belief in simplicity. But as we started to ship products and started to get customer feedback, there was like this lightning rod within our team all throughout engineering where people really understood the power of simplicity and it, and it kind of went from a belief to a religion, I would almost say. And you know, we, um, we, you know, we, we've just always tried to do that with every new feature we come out with and this felt like an area where um, there was such a, a vacuum of simplicity that there was a huge opportunity to rethink things. And so with this feature, um, it's totally built in, it's totally integrated. Uh, you can easily just stretch a volume across now two sites 
And one of the problems we went to go solve was the third site mediator problem, where you always need a third site witness in, the, in a stretch cluster to kind of determine if there is a failure, who's the surviving side that you want to have actually process the application I.O. Um, and so we're delivering that as a service, as a SaaS service from our Pure One infrastructure. So it's just one more way that we take one more step and one more uh, kind of pain of the infrastructure away. So I'd like to uh, drill in a little bit on the NVMe side of this. All right. We've done some research uh, which, uh, on the architecture which we think is coming up, which we're calling Unigrid, because it allows this very even uh, access to data at very low latencies yep. across there. And, and really will start, in our view, a different sort of applications, really very, very different way you can combine uh, legacy uh, s s state applications with the uh, AI applications and other things like that. How do you how are you going to bring that yeah. to market? Who are you who are you selling that to? Yeah, we're I mean we're super excited about this transition to NVMe, and we're trying to take a real leadership role here. And um, so much of it reminds us actually of the early days of Pure. You know, when we started Pure, Flash was expensive, but it was exotic. You had a bunch of people trying to make it this one percent technology. And you know, our, our whole idea was, look, let's not make it a Ferrari. You know, let's, let's democratize it for all, and we think everybody deserves Flash, and we, we did a bunch of work to try to mainstream it. And you know, we're trying to take a very similar approach with NVMe, where a lot of the early uh, folks who approached NVMe built very specialized appliances, did kind of exotic things, and you know, our view is this should be mainstream. All, all Flash arrays should be built on NVMe. And the real advantage is something you hinted at, um, it's just massively parallel. And so, you know, here you have Flash, this inherently parallel medium on its own, um, and you know, we're talking to it through these legacy SCSI protocols that have been around forever. Um, NVMe is a huge opportunity to finally open that up, um, but you know, we had an initial insight, I believe, where when we uh, approached this, we didn't just say, look, we, we should just go get an NVMe SSD. Um, we realized that that whole architecture has to be optimized from software to hardware, and so we kind of foregoed or forewent the SSD form factor. We built our own direct Flash module and the real magic of how we've approached this is not only um, shipping a, a device that's massively parallel, but building a bunch of software within Purity that knows how to take advantage of that and brings all the flash management up to the software tier so we can kind of take advantage of it end to end. And so, you know, these are things we just don't see our competitors in the market doing right now. Um, huh. Maybe one more comment on, on your, your um, um, kind of parallelism. I mean, I think you're right in that if you look at a, a wide range of of kind of the next generation web scale applications, whether they be just more classic NoSQL databases on through to analytics, on through to AI and ML. AI and ML are kind of maybe the most extreme examples, but they're all far more parallel scale out applications than we were used to before. And so they thrive in environments where you have storage that can kind of um, marry that model. And you know, what we're finding in particular in the AI world is that um, we're not up against other storage vendors. I mean, uh, the alternative really is to go get a bunch of white box DAS and build your own storage layer and maybe use some open source stuff. Um, but that's cumbersome, um, and that has all the issues that, that everyone's aware of with that, right? And so we believe that as a, as a commercialized product, we have something pretty unique to go after these markets, and it's been exciting to see um, it even push us. Um, you know, one of, the, one of the things I think we surprised people with today was making Flashblade 5X bigger. You know, we announced it last year, people thought it was pretty big and fast to begin with, um, but it was these use cases and the early adopters that um, pushed us to make it larger. You know, we, we saw um, people in, in the early adopter phase of Flashblade buy in and deploy at much bigger scale than we were expecting. You know, we were kind of used to our experience with Flash Array where people started small, they got to use the technology, and then they kind of grew. Um, but I guess you don't do big data on a small scale. <laughs> so <laughs> people dive in. So I want to ask you about this whole, whole big data. This is probably the first time we've even used that mm. term today. Uh, it's amazing how fast that, that, that came and went, even though big data is now mainstream. But, and you said, you made the, the point, Matt, that not a lot of storage competitors are going after that. Well, you'd think big data, storage, they would, they would fit, but I think a lot of the com competitors realized, well, there's not a lot of money to be made there, and now it's just hitting its, its best stride. Here's my question. If you look at Hortonworks and, and Cloudera in particular, you're starting to see the, the cloud guys, you know, Amazon with its, with its data pipeline, certainly Google and, and, and Microsoft, are picking up a lot of action in the cloud with a full, as a service, sort of data pipeline. What are you, and it's, and it's affecting some of the on-prem activity. What are you seeing with regard to cloud versus on-prem and, and how does that affect your business? Yeah, I, I think you're right in the sense that if you, if you looked at how you could have deployed um, big data technologies before, I think there were basically two ways to do it. 
people either did in the cloud or they did on-prem with white box DAZ. Mm -hmm. And they've got servers and put disks inside. Um, so much of the first generation of big data was basically driven on Hadoop, which was um, fairly low cost and fairly focused at you know, streaming workloads where you, know, you had this uh, you know, kind of frankly not much performance profile or need for performance on, on disk. And so you know, uh, what we found in the early days was, hey, if you tried to put flash underneath it, it didn't help that Doesn't much. Doesn't do much you know, for you, right? Yeah. Um, but the thing that's changing now is people want to move away from those kind of slow batch queries to much more interactive analysis, much more real time. Spark, and so Hadoop's yeah. giving way to Spark. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so that's changing that discussion quite a bit. Um, back to the discussion though around kind of on-prem versus the cloud. Uh, you know, I think this is an area where as people get more and more invested in, in their data, um, they're understanding it's a, con it's a key control point. And so if I get all my data into one cloud provider, it's pretty hard to get it out of there. This is core to my business. Um, do I want that level of lock-in? Also, can I do better with my own dedicated solutions? And what we've found is that when we can bring FlashBade to bear these big data workloads, we can outperform what people do in the cloud handedly at a lower cost. And so there's a proclivity to want to kind of own your own destiny, to own your own infrastructure, uh, and the ability for us to deliver higher performance at a lower cost in the cloud, you know, we think is a pretty good connection. And, and of course complexity is hurt that, I say hurt, I mean the market's growing very nicely, but it's actually hurt a lot of the practitioner's ability to absorb technology. I, I suppose Pure's in its, in its insane focus on simplicity helps a little bit, but you, and as, as the spark, and that sort of yeah. simplified the whole Hadoop thing, uh, but you've still got, you need a lot of smart people to make this stuff work. So, so it's, a, it's going to be interesting to see, but it, 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 what I'm hearing from you is, you don't have a lot of storage competitors going hard yeah. after this, yeah. right? And so, well, the it, guys that have done really well with Hadoop, that have on-prem infrastructure, you would think would be picking this up quite yeah. rapidly. Yeah, well and, and look, we're um, having discussions with all of the Hadoop providers as well because if we can help them deliver a higher customer satisfaction and you know, a, a better outcome, it's upside for them as well. They don't want to be storage companies. Well, they, they need help. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, the irony is that, that, that you know, cloud era is in the cloud era and, and the cloud is eating away <laughs> at, its, at its base, <laughs> so they need somebody's going to help them simplify, I mean, they're a yeah. software company, help us simplify the on-prem infrastructure. One other thing you said earlier that, that I think it's been an interesting learning for us in FlashBlade as well, I mean, when we kind of went into the FlashBlade experience, we kind of expected that people would buy and all they would care about is performance. And so we asked ourselves, well, how much does this user base really care about simplicity? We found the total opposite to be true. Um, most of who we're selling FlashBlade to oh, yeah. are not IT folk. <laughs> they're data scientists, right. they're engineers, they're creatives, you know, they're line of business people. And they want nothing to do with managing infrastructure. And so the simplicity, oftentimes we're replacing what would have been racks and racks of disk that they didn't want to deal with to begin with. And so the simplicity value prop, shockingly, is actually more important we are finding for FlashBlade even than Flash Array. Makes a lot, we have a saying in theCUBE that data is the new development kit. Because it's like you say, it's, it's, it's data engineers, it's data scientists, even application uh, uh, developers are starting with the data. Yep. And so, and, and complexity has choked that, that whole industry. So that's, that's excellent, okay. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was going to ask, uh, one, of the, one of the things you were saying very clearly here is that the drive of getting data up to the cloud to do this AI, or up to anywhere to do the uh, processing to, to create the models, uh, is going to have to be ameliorated by reduction of that data. Uh, by reduction I mean turning that data into information or tags yeah. or whatever it is as it's going up the line, very close to where the data is. I caught the needles produced. in the haystack. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, extract the needles very early on. So can you talk a little bit more about what your vision is there? Um, how are you going to do that? Uh, who are you partnering with to do that? Yeah, so you know, I, I think you hit on a very important problem and I, I think everybody is starting to finally internalize how much faster devices and machines can oh, generate data human than beings. humans. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, so, yeah. you know, we're used to this kind of human era of cognition of data creation, yeah. um, but this asymptote is happening. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's becoming quite obvious that basically machines have the potential to generate data much faster than it can be stored, used, and especially sent back to the cloud. And so you need some level of local processing to analyze it, to, to send back more, you know, kind of pertinent metadata. Um, the other challenge is that many of the use cases that people want to use at the edge are latency sensitive. And so you can't take the time to think about it, send it all back, think about it, send it back again, and Model do it. some real-time <laughs> control thing, right? Um, my favorite anecdote that kind of proves this is, uh, is some of Amazon's infrastructure, where they build out 
dedicated data centers within their distribution facilities because they need to be able to kind of real-time analyze the video feeds of everything that's going yeah. on and make decisions, right? And so if they can't send all the data to their cloud, <laughs> they have to build their own data center. <laughs> Nobody can. There, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and so it's just indicative of a broader solution there, right? Um, you'll see a, a, a demo uh, that we're going to be doing tomorrow where we're doing a great co-processing app where um, we're, we're kind of uh, collecting a bunch of data here at the show, analyzing it, and then sending part of it up to the cloud uh, and partnering with Google to analyze it there and, and, and showcasing kind of an example use case of this. Mm -hmm. and so we think it's an area that's going to be important. Um, you know, part of that also brings us to what we've done with um, our Purity Run. So one of the things we right. announced today was opening up our Purity platform to third party code to developers. And we see a number of use cases for this. Many of our cloud customers have asked for this where they want to kind of tie the storage more directly into their application. But the other use case we see is the edge, hmm. where you know, if, if we can deploy um, a, a local pure device um, on your oil rig, in your plane, in your factory, whatever, um, and have that processing capability happen there, and then, uh, then have that summarize the data, be able to send it back, it provides more of an all-in-one solution for that. And so, you know, we don't have dedicated products in this space yet, but this is our way of opening up the platform to be able to see how people develop on it and how they can start taking advantage of that. Okay, so uh, we got to wrap, but you, know, you were telling us you were employee number six. Yep. So that's quite a ride. I mean, so many companies just don't get to reach escape velocity, yep. uh, to use that term. You guys did. Um, what's next for you? Where do you want to take this thing? Yeah, I, I think we're all extraordinarily excited here at Pure. I mean, you know, so much of this first generation of Pure's growth has been reshaping um, you know, the existing storage environment. And you know, we feel like we're kind of through that mission. Yes, okay, only 20% or so of, of flash or of enterprise storage is flash, but the writing's on the wall, you know, we're delivering the products, you know, that that is momentum now, right? Right. And so so much of our next generation of innovation is going after these new data-driven use cases, uh, helping cloud providers, just going after what's next. And that opens up um, a much broader definition of what you can be as a data company. You know, we kind of stop referring to ourselves as a storage company, and we might have to get storage out of the name at some point. But you know, going after um, the broader problems around data is a much more exciting mission that we think powers the next decade. So, lots to do. Great, all right, Kix, thanks very much for coming to theCUBE. It's great to have you. All right, Thank appreciate you. it. All right, yeah. keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap up right after this short break. This is theCUBE, we're live from Pure Accelerate 2017. Right back. <laughs>